Hey everyone, welcome to the weekly webinar. Uh, thank you for taking the time to be here. My name is Jacob Witt. Uh, for those of you where this is your first webinar, um, we've been trying to host these every single Tuesday. And the point being to show off cool features about RoboFlow stuff we're working on. Uh, so today we're gonna be talking about uh, using models to help you label your data, uh, both kind of existing functionalities we have as well as some kind of teasers of what we're working on. So I'm gonna start by backing up a little bit. What is the problem we're trying to solve? Um, the problem is that labeling is not fun. Uh, probably if you were in a RoboFlow webinar, uh, you've labeled your share of images and you can kind of understand the challenges there. Um, there's kind of this cat and mouse game when you're trying to use models to label images. The issue is, is that if you were still in the middle of training your model, you don't yet have a model that is good enough to label those images. So the idea of using a model to label images, sometimes is a little fraught. You might have a model that's okay, but not good enough. And then you need to come and manually edit those later, uh, or you might not have a model that's good enough at all. Uh, there's kind of two big uh, schools of thought of how you can use models. The first is distillation. So this is, if you have a really big model, you can use that to, um, like pass through its knowledge to smaller models. Uh, so an example is you take a model like Coco and you know that knows a lot about people and you put that into a model, um, a lot of data about tennis and all of a sudden you have a model, you train it and you have a model that's good at tennis players. We'll get into some examples of that. Um, that can be really good where you're looking for specificity. So you have a model that has people, but you need tennis players. It can be good for size and cost. So let's say there's this really big bulky model. Um, you can't run it on the edge. It's really expensive if you want to host it. Um, you rather go and train a smaller model like a Yolo V8 Nano, which you know you can just run on an edge device. You know you can uh, host very cheaply. And then ownership. So maybe you don't own the rights to some bigger model, uh, but if you know if you train a smaller one, uh, that's your model and you can use it as you wish. Um, the asterisk I'll put there is that sometimes there are terms and licenses for certain models saying, you can't use this to distill a smaller model. So whenever you're doing this, make sure you're kind of following the rules and regs. The second reason you might be want to use a model is just for uh, enhancement. So this is in RoboFlow, you can use uh, our smart poly feature to help you draw polygons very rapidly. Uh, and you can use other models just to kind of speed up things on a day-to-day -day -day basis where uh, maybe a normal model wouldn't work super well. Um, this is gonna be a very casual session. Uh, I've got some live examples to show you all, but at any point, feel free to either do the raise hand or come off mute and just shout at me uh, or put it in the chat if you have any questions and we can go from there. Uh, I'll make sure to leave some time at the end as well. Um, if you have images you would like to see kind of ML model labeled, uh, we can play around, see if we can find prompts that work well um, and go from there. So I'm gonna pause for kind of, let's call it 10 seconds. Um, any questions before we get started? Cool. I'm going to kick off. So first, I just want to show you a little bit of what I was talking about with where distillation can be useful, where enhanced um, modeling can be useful, and where sometimes you don't even need to use a model to label images. So we all know a bell curve. In the middle, these are the most common features, classes, elements that exist in image data. Most of the time, you don't need to train a model here. So if you come to me and you say, hey, Jacob, I want a model that does cats and dogs. I want a model that does people. I want a model that does houses. There's already a very good model that's very small, uh, probably one of, the co like one of the models trained on Coco that you can just use off the shelf. No labeling, no processing, no model evaluation. It's just ready to go. For some of the rarer cases, so it's like pretty common, not massively common, and we'll get into those where there isn't a specific class. This is where distillation is really useful. And then finally on the kind of far tips uh, of the distribution are these examples where there's just no data of this and you will probably need to go and label it yourself. Though there might be some tools you can use to speed you up. So first for distillation, uh, we have this public repo called auto distill. Many of you have probably heard about it. Um, what it does is it allows you to very easily take a big model, give it some images, 
and distill this base model into a target model. Um, so for instance, uh, this GIF is showing imagery um, that we took a really large model and we distilled it into a YOLO V8 model that now works really good on containers. Um, the, there's a bunch of models that are supported. So you can see for object detection, we support all these different foundation models, uh, instance side classification, and we're adding more all the time. Um, and just to get started, it's pretty quick. So you define your base model. So here I'm using Grind Sam, and I would call it, like these are the classes I'm looking for. I want shipping containers. Uh, I would define the images I want to label. I would run it uh, and train a YOLO V8 model. And I've got a model ready to go. And if I want to go and put that back in a RoboFlow, either to evaluate the model or run it on our servers, you could, with a couple lines of code, just uh, upload that model. So that is in a shell auto distill. Uh, we've recently added support for some of these newer um, foundation models, like Florence 2, I believe, is already supported. Uh, we released those as sub modules that you can find. And for example, Florence 2 auto distill. So for instance, these sub modules look like this. Uh, the models are really chunky, so they're each loaded individually and you can pull them from there. So that's if you wanna do it yourself, um, you wanna play around with the code, everything's open source. Some of the underlying models might not be, uh, be aware of that as you use these, but uh, that's how auto distill works. We've gone and built uh, a hosted auto distill as well, which is called the auto label that you all might be familiar with. So the way this works, there we go is if you have your images you can go here to start using auto label the way this works is we're using grounding dino in the back end grounding dino takes text prompts and turns it into classes or, or object detection annotations so here i'm defining my prompts as window and door if I want to go and generate test results, we see here. Now, what's really critical is you can define your confidence at different levels to be able to make sure you're picking up the objects you care about. So here, as I go here, and you can't see it, but I can click this down. As I drop the confidence, I'm able to see, oh, I'm picking these up. Same with doors. I can drop this, and it pops. Now, for some, like here, I'm picking up this really big one, and as I drop the confidence even more, I'm picking up even more of these. You can already see, though, that sometimes we get these very large predictions. Um, in some cases, there might be work you need to do after the fact to clean these up. Um, so if we pop it back here, and again, you can see as we drop this, you're able to pick this up. Um, really, how this is valuable is if you have 8,000 images, you know you need a label. This is a very helpful way to go and pre-label those images. Once you feel like you've got good parameters set that work for your images, so here I might want to bump this up a little bit. I would click auto label, I'd click go, and it will start auto labeling. And you can see those kind of progress here. Any questions before I go to the next one? Feel free to put them in chat while I go and start setting that up. So generally what this is very good at is, again, it's this, I'm in like the high point of my distribution or I'm kind of in the middle. Um, of these are common enough objects that I'm pretty sure I can describe verbally. So here I've got these images of um, like things on shelves. You can see like it's very snappy at being able to pick out these products. And I think if I have some that are bigger, you can see the whole, let's do this. So here we're not picking all of them up, but I can drop the confidence a little bit. It's picking up, here's the shelf, here are these products. And the game is basically finding something where the confidence works, where you're not getting too many false positives, but you're picking up everything. Again, once you feel good of like, okay, this is moving around, this is picking up what I need, you would just go and do that bulk auto label. I'm going to next show you where you can kind of start to get in trouble. So I don't know if you're familiar with Wordle, but Wordle is this annoying word game where you type in guesses and you're trying to, in six guesses, guess a word. Uh, I wanted to build a model that can help me identify the different boxes and play around with it there. Um, I actually used auto distill to pick up and start annotating these images. 
Um, if you look at it, when you need to annotate these, uh, let's do the foundation model. When you're starting to label these, um, if you want to label every single box, it's five by six. So it's 30 boxes you need to draw. Uh, that gets old really quick. So what you can do is, or what I just did, I just said box. Let's see if it picks it up. And as it dropped it, you get this big one. And you get a lot of these smaller ones, but it picks up a lot of them. Now, this is not really great. This is good enough to get started. So I did six images like this, but then I trained my own model. And I think a lot of people don't really realize how quickly you can use a small sample of images to get a model that works. So I ended up having a data set and I had to take the auto label images. I had to clean them up a little bit and I got six images. I trained on just those six and I got a model that actually works pretty well. So now if I come here, I can also use my own models. So this is my own object detection model. This also works for instance segmentation. And if I use it here, it is just picking up all the boxes. So now if I've got a lot of images I want to throw at it, I can just dump them in and I know this model will work well. Uh, we've got a very good bulk inference and it will cruise through those. Now, if I want to start doing something where I actually want to pick up the different colors, this is where I can get in trouble. So if you go back to the found, so my model doesn't discern the different classes, even though I want to say, hey, this is gray, this is yellow, this is green. So what I could try to do is I could try to use a foundation model like this. And I could say, I want green box. I want a yellow box. I want a white box. I want a gray box. And we can see how that works. Now, so the gray is really only picking up that one. The white boxes is not picking up anything. Yellow, we actually get a little bit, and the green we get. So we're getting there a little bit. We're not picking up any of the white boxes as before, and we struggle with these gray boxes. Um, something we can do, um, or we've been working on a new uh, way of labeling, where instead of giving these text cues, you use visual tool uh, cues. I'm going to switch to that and show you why this might be a little cleaner. So here we're using OWL v2. Uh, this demo is live. I'm going to link it afterwards. It's owlvit.com. Um, it's only running on one GPU. So if you all come and try and test that while I'm doing this, we'll probably crash the website. So please don't. Um, I'll give you some examples of what this does. So here we've got an image of some coffee beans. And I'll get back to that Wordle example in a sec, where you would label one, would load a little bit, and all of a sudden it would annotate all of them. This is obviously, if you've ever had to label lots and lots and lots of very small objects on an image, you can immediately see the benefit here. Um, this will populate for everything. So we did in half a second, we did 165 annotations. Um, I don't really see any duplicates or overlaps. Uh, this is super clean. Um, moving kind of up a level of complexity, this also works across multiple images. So if I go here, I was working on a data set that takes a lot of different clocks. Yeah, here we go. So here we've got all these clocks. Where if I label one, cool, that's there. But it will label all these. There's a slight um, UI bug where these look off kilter. But if I click on them, you can see, oh, it went through. And with one label on one image, it's gone and it's labeled the clocks in every single one of these images. Um, and here, there's no clock and it didn't label anything, so it's picking up the correct thing. So you can see generally this is picking up what we want it to. So again, we drew one bounding box, we described what it is, and it works really well. Um, I'm now going to return to the Wordle example. So here we go. Let's do this. So one thing we've also added is the ability to work with different classes. So we're going to have gray box. We're going to have yellow box. We're in a green box and white box. So I guess we'll start by labeling the grays. So you can see it labeled everything. We don't really want it to work that way. So we can also do negative prompt saying, well, no, that's not quite right. So by labeling just this Q one time, it's shown that none of these are what we really want to be looking for. I can now start to use the other colors. 
So if I labeled this yellow box here, we pick some of those up. If I label a white box, it picks up that. We got a weird one here, which we can kind of narrow out. Nice. A green box will be this E. And then we just need to do a couple of these negative prompts because some more of these has, have popped up. And then we have initial um, predictions. So these gray boxes are marked in green. I know the colors are a bit confusing. The green is marked in the pink. The yellows are yellow. Um, and the white boxes are in blue. Now, where this ends up, and we can also adjust the confidence on each of these if we think it's kind of over or under tuned. That took a little bit of time. Still less time than having to label all 30 of those boxes on my own. But where this is really pop, uh, powerful is now we've labeled everything. Again, we have this slight UI issue. But if we click on this, you can see we've actually annotated these very cleanly. Now, there's a couple of errors. So I can see that this gray box is labeled incorrectly. I can do that there. And now it's fixed there. So I basically made, I think, seven total annotations. And now all these images are getting annotated correctly in the way I want. Um, this is a beta. We're still testing this out. Uh, this is a demo functionality. Uh, but the hope is that with only a couple of bounding box annotations in RoboFlow in the near future, you're going to be able to go and um, very easily cruise through a lot of annotations, even for pretty abstract classes, which are not represented in Cocoa, like these tiles. So I'm going to pause there. Um, I'm going to, any questions? would be really helpful. Um, if you have your own data and you want to see if we can get it to be ML labeled, um, I'm happy to take a try. Some of these methods don't work for everything, but I'm happy to give it a shot. Um, and then I'll also spend some time talking about kind of what's next on our roadmap, what are the kinds of features we want to build around ML labeling, um, and we'll then just kind of open it up for general Q&A. So anyone have any questions? And do you have any data that you want me to try out on these models?